This is Malnad, the loveliest part of Mysore state, with its dense forests, deep valleys, winding rivers and cascading waterfalls. On seeing this magnificent gift of nature, the late Dr. Visveshwaraya had remarked, what a colossal waste of energy. Yes, nature here was kind, but its resources had remained unexploited. For, if harnessed, water means power, electric power for homes and industries. To Mysore goes the credit of pioneering hydroelectric projects in India. It began with the construction of the Shiva Samudram power station on the river Kaveri as early as 1902. This was followed by the Shimsha power station in 1940. The Mahatma Gandhi hydroelectric station built in 1946 on the Sharavati utilized about 10% of the power potential of the river. It generated about 120,000 kilowatts of electricity. After independence, much more power was needed to meet the planned targets of rapid industrialization, rural electrification and irrigation. To meet this growing demand, it was decided to harness the remaining 90% of the river's unutilized power potential. It was planned to construct three reservoirs. One, a masonry dam across the Sharavati near Linganamaki. The water from here would be diverted to the second reservoir to be built across the Talakalale, a tributary of the Sharavati. And the third reservoir to be built across the Sharavati at Gerasopa, utilizing the tail race waters. It was planned to establish three powerhouses, one at Linganamaki, the second, the main powerhouse on the left bank of the Sharavati River, 503 meters below the Talakalale reservoir and the third is proposed below the tail race dam near Gerasopa. With the completion of all three powerhouses, the Sharavati Valley project would have an installed capacity of over 1.2 million kilowatts. It would be making a significant contribution towards achieving our goal of 11.2 million kilowatts of power by 1966. The sites selected for construction were difficult to reach with no road or rail links. Roads had to be built across the hills and through dense forests to bring men and material to the project sites. On December the 5th, 1956, Mr. S. K. Patel, then the Union Minister for Irrigation and Power, laid the foundation stone of the Linganamaki Dam, initiating the work on India's largest power project. It was a signal for thousands of workers to give their sweat and toil to building a project which would ensure a rapid industrialization of the country and a better and fuller life for themselves and their children. These thousands of unknown men and women became partners in the drama of a resurgent nation's march towards economic regeneration. Linganamaki, a masonry dam, is built almost entirely by hand. With the laying of each stone, the dam rises higher and higher to carry water to the powerhouse at the base, penstocks are embedded in the dam. Side by side, work on the channel over four kilometers long continues. will carry water from the Linganamaki Dam to the Talakalale Reservoir. To avoid damage due to any landslides, portions of this concrete line channel are covered. Near Malale, the channel passes through a 648 meter long tunnel up to the Talakalale Reservoir. Across the Talakalale, another dam is built. The dam will be 62 meters high and 485 meters long.
From Talakalale, water will travel along open channels and two tunnels to the two vertical search tanks near Bodden Bile. These surge tanks will control the changes of pressure in the flow of water into the penstocks. From each of the surge tanks, water will travel through five tunnels into the large penstock pipes. The 1,411 meter long penstock pipe laid along the hill slope to utilize a drop of 475 meters for the generation of electricity. The main powerhouse also starts taking shape. Here, intricate machinery is installed for the ten generating units. Each of the generators will produce 89,100 kilowatts of electricity. In terms of cost, the consumer of Sharavati power will pay one of the lowest rates per unit in India. In the meantime, new colonies to accommodate the workers and engineers and also hospitals and welfare centers are being provided. Within a few years, giant structures started appearing on the horizon. Linganamaki Dam reaches its planned height of 55 meters and length of 2 kilometers. While the main Linganamaki Dam is entirely masonry, an earthen dam is being built along the right bank of its reservoir prevent overflow of water in the low-lying valleys. The Talakalale Dam is planned as a balancing reservoir. With the help of water received from Linganamaki, it will sustain the daily load requirements of the main power station. By January 1965, the first phase of the drama was over. Linganamaki Reservoir, with a storage capacity of 4,417 million cubic meters of water, was completed. Water from here started traveling to Talakalali Reservoir through a partially covered channel. Talakalali the balancing reservoir was also ready for storing its full capacity of 130 million cubic meters of water. One of the generators of 89,100 kilowatt capacity was ready to be commissioned. On January 25, 1965, Prime Minister of India switched on the first of the ten generators and ushered in an era of faster industrial growth for the people of Mysore. Power from Sharavati is already feeding many new industries and hundreds of villages and towns in the state. This is only the beginning. Before long, over 1.2 million kilowatts of power from the Sharavati project will come into the service of man. It will help to establish more new industries, irrigate more acres, electrify more homes, thus bringing about a promise of plenty.